You're great at golf. What's your handicap? Uh, mostly drinking. I know. No. I, I was about to do it, and I go, there's no, there's no way he's not going to take this. Tops off World Tour, March 7th, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Toronto, Ottawa, Kingston. Next week, Erie, Pennsylvania, Fairborn, Ohio, Atlantic City, Salisbury, Maryland. Tops off World Tour. You're off the whole, like, uh, like I'm, the whole I'm on internet. the fringe of it. I try to avoid it, but... Really? I don't think in our careers we can avoid it anymore. So, like, what's your... You de- set the bar too high, Bert. What's your... De- <laughs> <laughs> I'm with Rory Scovel. He's got a new special. I, by the way, I, I misread the title of your special. I'm dyslexic. So, what's the name of your special? Wait, I'd like to know what you thought it uh, said. <laughs> I'll tell you exactly what I thought it was. It was... Hold on, it just... <laughs> I thought it was. You were on a porn tab. You're like, sex, wait, this can't be. <laughs> rough sex and things in between. That's stuff. That's close. Because I misread religion. Rough with religion and that's religion. it. Yeah. Fuck. I'm <laughs> telling you when I say this. I, I, so we're doing a new thing for everyone listening. We're mashing up my old show open tabs with with Birdcast. So I have Roy Scovel. He's here to promote his special. It's on Max. It's fucking awesome. Thank you. If you've never seen Roy do stand up, you are missing out in the the pure genius of stand up. I've said this for everyone in this house says this. We all feel this way. You are the playfulness every comic o- hopes to be authentically on stage. You do it in specials. You are fucking incredible. You are <laughs> amazing you. on podcasts. Like with you God, and Todd I got to do this show every day. You and this Todd is Glass the way to start. Are the heart? The, it's the first I, time I Todd, ever heard you. Todd was a massive influence on uh, when I first saw him at the DC Improv, and I saw how silly he was. That was the light bulb going off of like, oh yeah, why am I taking this this seriously? And why am I not just trying to generate fun as opposed to caring so much that I'm doing a really well-written joke that makes a point? Like, yes. yeah, sure, do that. But why don't I also be silly as fuck and love doing it? The only thing I can't find, and I've been looking for it all morning, is you and Todd Glass doing Red Fox. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. It's the hardest I've ever thing. laughed. I was on a train from <laughs> London to Amsterdam, and... I was in the back by myself, drinking by myself, and I was crying, and I did not know who you were at the time, and I was crying laughing at you and Todd doing, so can you just tell the story of the, t- just, t- you don't have to do the bit, but just tell the whole thing for yeah. anyone listening. The, like, his Vegas show where he came yes. out, yeah, he came out, and uh, I think, I can't remember what the the thing was, if it was just, like, it was a show in Vegas, and maybe there were like fifteen people there, or it just wasn't like uh, a very big I'm gonna crowd. Jump in. I'm gonna yeah, jump in. yeah. So I've heard the story from other people. Yeah. Everyone says it was Billy Crystal. Oh, so okay. Billy Crystal was opening up for Red Fox. Okay, he was in Vegas, and they said to Billy, "Listen, you might have to do twenty. He's running late." Okay. So at forty-five <laughs> minutes, people start leaving. Right. And Billy Crystal's like, "Fuck!" An hour in. Oh, okay, this makes sense now. An yeah. An hour yeah. in, there's fifteen people. Yeah. In the audience, and Red Fox shows up. Yeah. And then he uh and he comes out, he's introduced, and naturally they're playing the theme song uh from San Francisco, right? And yeah. he comes out and they uh yeah, they start playing it. He walks out. I don't remember it specifically, it was just so <laughs> so long ago, but doesn't he like walk out and he's just like, ah, fuck this and like immediately leaves <laughs> like he doesn't so, even <laughs> So by the way, I I'm I'm so happy that I remember this better than you. Oh, I don't remember was, my own I, act. I remember so. this so vividly. So he uh, Billy Crystal at an hour in there's 15 people in the audience they're like Red Fox is here so he's like alright and they're like and Billy Crystal's like everybody ladies side and gentlemen note, so, side note can, great job on Billy Crystal because if that's me I'm like I'm fucking leaving too I can't <laughs> you can't ask me to do 15 and then switch it to 60 I haven't planned for that <laughs> I've been there shout out to D.L. Hughley <laughs> oh god so Billy Crystal says ladies and gentlemen it's the man you came to see you know him from dot 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 wash your ass Put your hands together for Red Fox. And the band goes, bum, bum, burn it. Yeah. Bum, bum, burn it, burn it, bum, bum, burn it. Bum, bum, burn it, burn it, bum, 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 And he's milking it the whole way out, right? Bum, 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 meow, bum, meow, bum, meow. Red Fox gets up, half in the bag, sunglasses on, gold rings, gold Rolex. Looks at 15 people, music cuts off, and he goes, shit, I ain't performing for no 15 people. And he starts to walk off, and the band goes, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> I'm looking for this video. If you can find this video, send it to me. I will play it on the next podcast for whoever. Todd yeah. and Rory did what I can only say was the most 
authentically hilarious <laughs> 35 minutes of their impressions of Seinfeld, yeah. <laughs> of their impressions of themselves, yeah, doing of their impressions of a blind person. Like right. it was, it's the beautiful thing about you and, and your special. Your special is on max. I cannot recommend this enough. I'm so jealous in so many ways. We're going to get to some videos because, and I don't want to get too away from it. Great intro song. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> by the way, by the way, we can start here. Great intro song. Have you kept up with Frankie Goes to Hollywood? Uh, no. Well, let but me. I think I've heard things, but let's hear it. Let let's, me catch you up. Yeah, and this yeah. is based on my research. I love it when someone ha has done the research and is a fountain of knowledge. This is, this is, a is brand good. new Burt Kreischer. Okay. I'm so excited. I'm that. sensing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's sobriety that you're sensing. <laughs> So this I is did, the George Costanza when he stopped having sex and <laughs> masturbating and he was just full on a genius. So I did a deep dive on Frankie Goes to Hollywood because of your your uh, your intro song is Relax. Yep. Don't do it. Yep. Did you know that uh, the lead singer, whose name is... Uh, oh, it's not Frankie? No, it's, there's no Frankie in the fucking band. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? The lead singer's name is Holly Johnson. Okay. Holly Johnson was a a... Very outwardly seductive gay man who just did like, like seductive sex shows. Yeah, and he would sing and he would perform. In, this is in the eighties. Oh, okay. Ronald Reagan is president. Yeah, Nancy Reagan is saying just say no. Yeah, and he is up there in a thong with with <laughs> chains across his last, telling people not to come. Mm -hmm. If you are young and you never heard this song, it is such yeah an epic fucking song and I have to tell you yeah. I used to come to stage on it a long time ago oh nice because it's it's a great fucking song yeah 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 they broke they were together four years okay they broke up because the bass player and the lead singer Holly got into a fight at Wembley Stadium <laughs> and he kicked him in the asshole <laughs> And that was it. And that was. I it. mean, that would do it, I guess. And and then VH1 in 2000 behind the music decided, decided <laughs> to get the band back together. Yeah, I watched the video last night. It is first of all, everyone. It's they're all from Liverpool. Yeah, so they're all like, fucking no, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. And and they <laughs> and this is old school bum rushing videos. Yeah, yeah of yeah. like. The guy's putting his baby in the car and they run up with a camera and it's raining in Miami. Yeah, yeah. And they run up with a camera crew. Hey, 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 can we talk to you for a second? Right, yeah. Like, Go fuck off. Yeah. Oh, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. And and you can tell I'm a deep diver in this. Yeah. And you sh you probably know this. In order to hear someone, they have to be mic'd. Mm -hmm. And you can't hear them at times. So I go, oh, this is authentic. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's I, actually, yeah. Why did you pick Frankie Goes to Hollywood? You know, I just, it, they had a good energy to it, and I can't remember if I keep looking this way. It's because the the my friend and tour manager for this tour, uh, Grant, is over there. But at one point, we were trying to figure out uh, when the tour started, like, oh, I should come out to something, or it should, you know, there are certain venues I played where they, they were like, no, just get introed and go up there, like we do at clubs. And so I, I, sometimes I would do that, but then when it was like, hey, it's an actual rock club, and they've got crazy lights, and they can do a song. I think it was in uh, Arizona. I can't remember. What was it before Phoenix? What did we play? Tucson. Tucson. By and the way, they, they is, had that a... That comes from a man who spends yeah. way too much time touring. You I know are, routing. I yeah. know routing. Yeah. They had a brand new lighting system. And so we had said, oh, well, we were kind of joking. It could be fun to come out, a, out out to a song that's too big with lights that are too much. And the guy goes, oh, you just got these lights in. He showed us what he could do. And we just started laughing and we go, okay, we'll do it. We'll come out to this. And I was like, and I'll walk out at this moment. And so it, we did it one time. It made us laugh. So then we did it the next night and they really got it right. <laughs> and yeah. we were like, oh, wait, this is actually kind of a cool way to start the show in general. And then we just kept it. It wasn't like some narrow it down because I love that song. I do think it's a great song to come it's out to. The energy song. is right. Do you, do you have a highlight? In, do you have times in your life that you remember listening to that song? I have two times specifically. Not the really, first no. time I heard it, we were driving uh, past this place. It was very inside baseball of Tampa. We were driving past Avila. Okay. I heard it in the car with my mom. And I went, ooh, this song's great. The next time I heard it, we were all eating mushrooms in the back of a CRX, driving from Tallahassee. Not next time, but another time. Tallahassee to Tampa. And, and your mom was also there at this time, too. <laughs> <laughs> She's there every time. <laughs> the, 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 but it's, I couldn't tell. Like, I'm a professional comedian. I couldn't tell how much of your special was fucking around 
and how much was written. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I couldn't. I could not tell. It all, all, all of it was born out of fucking round, which means if I don't, if I kind of keep it how it came to be, uh, it sells it much easier because I just kind of keep doing it that way. Yeah, that it presents that way, but. I mean, I, I as you know, I I like to go down those those avenues. Like if something opens up and I can fuck around a little bit, like I've seen when, you, I've seen you just do fuck around. Like yeah, I've, when, it's first time I've worked with like. the Masonic in San Francisco. We yeah, did yeah, a, yeah, a yeah, yeah. Eve show, and you went up in character and didn't break character, and I didn't know that you weren't that person. Yeah, <laughs> I got right. off and I was like, "So where are you from?" And you were just like, "Oh, Atlanta or whatever." And I was like, "Wait, your voice changed." <laughs> And you're like, yeah, that's not me. I don't really fly helicopters. <laughs> right, yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. the fuck you were talking right, about. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, I prefer that. I prefer that going up and messing around like that. But it, it truly, it's where you suddenly say something where you go, oh, that's a bit. I mean, yeah. that's how we are in our lives with our friends hanging out. And then someone goes, oh, you should write that down. That could be a thing. And then we do. And it's like the same version of that, except it's on stage where you kind of are a little bit of pressure to make sure it's funny right now. When you said, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to go through your special. Like I said, I've only watched first seven minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And, but it's only eight minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I know, but I just didn't have the time for that 60 more seconds. You, it's, <laughs> your last joke just, is too long though. That's the thing. <laughs> you, when you started breaking down the Bible, you're, it's, it's so perfect, and it leads me to my first video that I want to show you. I just want to yeah. I want to jump off here and then pick your brain about this topic. Sure. Do you have a great – this is the best video that's on the internet. <laughs> right. is, I've watched it possibly 25 times. Okay. It is three hours long. Do we watch all of it? No. <laughs> <laughs> we watch the whole thing. <laughs> it's two hours and 25 The longest minutes. podcast ever. <laughs> it's, it's called oh, History Phones. of the Entire World. Okay. Now, what do you know about the entire world? Uh, in terms of history? And just like, how old do you think the world is? The and actual planet? The world. Um, I believe it to be billions to trillions. <laughs> I don't believe it to be 5,000 years old. <laughs> if that's what this person is about to tell us. <laughs> 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 it's, such a, it's such a weird number that I don't know how they got there. <laughs> like, they said it's 85 million years old. 85 million? And I was like, who counted? Did I say trillion? You said is, that, is that dumb? 85 million. And then when do you think people showed up? Uh, out of 85 million years? Yeah. Well, if we're going AD into BC... Oh, God, I hate stuff like this. I believe that we walked out of the ocean. <laughs> uh, Does that we, count as person uh, like I, that day? <laughs> I, I wish I could play this whole video for you. Actually, we didn't December walk. 13th. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was on Christmas. Jesus's birthday. Uh, uh, 1225. <laughs> we didn't walk out of the ocean. We climbed out from the trees. Oh, okay. Well, as humans, yes. As humans, we, yeah, they're the first two. This is all in this video. I can't play this whole video, but this is a good. This is a good jumping off point for this conversation because you talked about the Bible. Yeah, and my, the the hardest I've laughed in a very long time was uh, I and I want you to watch the special, so I'm not going to lead into it. But you're talking of the letters to the Ephesians, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and I started laughing so hard because there is this weird thing when you talk about history that they almost make it. So we understand it today. Yeah. But it, there's no way it could have been understood then. Right. Like yeah, to yeah. say 85 million years, we go, oh, that makes sense. But then we're like, who the fuck? When do we start making calendars? Yeah. How do we know that was a year? Yes. Like yeah, when yeah. the fuck 85 years? <laughs> and then and then they glaze over things like, you know, uh, Homo sapiens started fucking uh, the, the Neanderthals. Yeah. Do you know why the Neanderthals disappeared? Uh, yeah, I did. Know, I I was reading that book, Sapiens, at one point. That's it. But it was so long ago <laughs> they, <laughs> that I. Wait, you, why did you read a book? Wait, what do you do? Read? You know the book Sapiens? Do you know? Wait, you're giving me that look like do you. I, no, do I read? No. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> okay, then that's why we're in the same boat. <laughs> These glasses are for Instagram. But I gotta say, 
similar. I got to say, you even having done any research on anything, I got to say, you are p- applying yourself more, way more than I ever have. That's this what is, throws me to go. Maybe he, no. maybe this weird closet over here that Bert doesn't talk about is that he has read so many books. No. But yeah, uh, we climbed out of trees. Then uh, Neanderthal couldn't uh, organize. Just so everyone knows that they don't think I'm crazy. Like, I know the dissension of, like, apes, the evolution. Yeah. <laughs> when I meant crawl of the ocean, I meant, de- like, the start of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to wait one of those, like, this yeah, is really go- fucking dumb. <laughs> they don't go back. They don't go back that far. We had to have crawled out of the ocean at some point. Yeah, exactly. There had to be dinosaurs. It's just so yeah. must wrap your head around. This you video know. is the, mo- it's the best video on the internet. Everyone should watch it. It's called The History of the Entire World. Did you know that Mesopotamia... Do you know where that is? This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. A common misconception about relationships is they have to be easy to be right. But sometimes the best one happens when both people put in the work to make them great. Therapy can be a place to work through those challenges you face in all your relationships, whether it's with friends, work, or your significant others, or anyone. I'll tell you right now, candidly, uh, Leanne and I are, are facing some difficulties. We are going to lose Isla. She's going to go to college and it is giving us anxiety and we are dealing with that separately in therapy and together as a couple, but we are using what we learn in therapy for each other to communicate better. It's a tough time. Empty nest is going to be really rough on us. Thank God we have therapy. And if you're thinking about starting therapy, give better help a try. It's entirely online designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit betterhelp.com slash bird today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, hel pcom slash bird. Did you know that Mesopotamia, do you know where that is? No. Iraq. Okay. Can you believe they haven't really, like when you, like, and this is more of a branding issue with Iraq, but like, they don't really... The PR team isn't on top The PR of team, like, yeah. when you think of Iraq, I think of dudes throwing sandals at each other and, like... Okay. And, like, and like hut... Not huts, but, like, a lot of, like, earthen building homes. Okay. And, like, and like and a lot of dust. Yeah. And, like, Mesopotamia was just, like, a couple months behind that. Okay. <laughs> like it wasn't, like... And so, to think that <clears throat> Iraq... Like, if, if civilization started in New York... Like... Take New York. America okay. started in New York City. Okay. Right, or whatever, right? That's where LS on. And then New York's our fucking biggest city. Yeah. Because that's where everyone showed up first. Yeah. And it's so fucking big. You Is think, that where they showed up first? Or was it Plymouth Rock? Well, Plymouth Rock. But but no, like... like I know. I just wanted to get that in. So... Huh, huh. <laughs> Hmm? Did, was it Plymouth Rock? And also, I have a thing with Plymouth, if I can hype those cars. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love finding out what kind of cars celebrities drive. It's my favorite thing in the world. Like, uh, like when you meet, like I met Bobcat Goldthwait for the first time. Yeah. And I go, what kind of car do you drive? And he was like, why would you ask that? I was like, because you're Bobcat. And I want to know, like, yeah. is your personality tethered to your car? Interesting. Because because you think, and then he said, shout out to Bob. He goes, I wish you hadn't asked me that. He goes, I just got rid of like a continental uh, Lincoln oh. with suicide doors convertible. I just got rid of it. And I got a fucking Mercedes. And I went, yeah. Re- you don't look like a Mercedes guy. And it's like, I'm having a hard time in it. Yeah. And it's so interesting. because He was I, the first comic I ever emceed for at a club. And he was so kind and nice so and like awesome. supportive. It like, it was the bar. It was the foundation yeah. to go, all right, if that guy said I'm good, I'm going to keep pushing. But going. he's like you. I mean, I mean this. He's like you. And that he is a very playful comic. Oh, super. Yeah, yeah, Oh, Mr. Polar Bear. Did you ever hear that bit? <laughs> I think so. He talks about... I remember... Th- this is funny. I did a Sasquatch. Remember that festival in yeah. the Pacific Northwest? Uh, he got on stage, and I can't remember what he said, but for some reason, he took his pants off and had his boxers and had like a little bit of pee on his boxers, and everybody laughed, and he looked, and it made him laugh. Because I was like... <laughs> I felt embarrassed for him. Yeah. But then I saw him laugh, and he goes... And he goes, ah, a little bit of pee. He goes, I'm fucking old. He goes, you want to know some motherfuckers? I'm the only comic here that's ever opened for Nirvana. And everyone was like, <laughs> yeah, he is cool. And yeah. I just watching him play and twist that moment he was, was like incredible. Do you know Kurt Cobain loved him? Yeah. It was like, you yeah. can take any chances. So he'd come out like I, I, I don't, naked. Off, naked. <laughs> yeah. And he, they would have him be the Nevermind baby. Yeah. <laughs> but, but all grown up. 
He, Did you know that? He would like come down on like strings and shit. <laughs> Bobcat is so fucking funny. Yeah. He is such, and that is like, that is lost in, in, in two types of people in stand up. There are the um, uh, aggressor stand up. Yeah. Like the guy that can't be wrong. Or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you guys are, let me tell you what's stupid about yeah. this. And then there's the fun, playful. Both are equally important, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. But it is fun to watch the playful ones. It's it's fun to watch the aggressors I agree. take chances and go deep. And It's fun when the aggressors learn to start having fun. Because then you go, yeah. well, now you can say your thing, but you realize, like, oh, I can make you kind of, like, feel the levity of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's my favorite thing about Rogan is when you get him to be playful. It's and a, then it goes, yeah, then it goes in that, there's more levity to it. He's yeah. such, Joe is genuinely one of the funniest people to be around because he's very he is a very intense dude and he's dialed in and he listens really he's good. intense <laughs> <laughs> where are you getting that information <laughs> do you watch his podcast i've seen it yeah i am <laughs> i'm not like watching it every time it drops i watch but... it all the time oh, okay i love it i love it is you he... absorb a lot i take in a lot of information but it's not smart information I don't know. It's it's a means of survival. You want to talk about plane crashes? You're we can. <laughs> uh but you're you're when you say it's not smart information, it's information that is within the industry that you currently work and so it yeah. it is smart information. Well, I like to know what <laughs> it's smart like, towards what we do. I like to know what people are doing. Mm. I like to I like to uh I have no I mean this. I hope I mean this. I hope it's real. I have no jealousy in stand up sure, because yeah, yeah. I do enjoy laughing. Yeah, yeah. I do get uh it, to go back to the Bible, I, uh, the- <laughs> <laughs> and just to get back to uh, the Book of Genesis, I wish what- I wish you had been. I wish you would. I want every kid in at Jesuit High School, where I went to high school, All Boys Catholic High School. I want every one of them to watch your special. I do too, because they are going to laugh fucking hysterically. We all sat through the while they relate to it. Yeah, they're and and you <laughs> breaking it down is the funniest guy in that classroom. You are the funniest guy in that class. The same guy that when you go out and you go to the lunchroom, you are that guy. And it, but uh, I covet. Now, when I say covet, I envy people like yourself or David Cross is a perfect example. Do you remember David Cross's special where he just, and he, I think he shot in Atlanta at the 40 watt and he just came out and he goes, I'm a man, I'm in Seattle. He did it in, in Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, yeah. At the, uh, I can't remember what it was, but yeah, that was, that, I mean, that was one of those moments where I was like, after that, and then he did Shut Up You Fucking Baby, that album. I mean, that was when I was like, I, I thought my whole life stand up with Seinfeld, suit, tie, set up, punch, very like, it's just very uh, television, very 80s. When I thought in the 80s, I never really watched stand up to see that there's this other version that is not so prim and proper. And yeah. I, I'm not to speak ill of that. I like that as well. But when I saw David Cross, I was like, oh, that this is more what I would want to do. I would want to dress like this. Yes. I would want to be this loose. Yes. Um, but yeah, that... Brody Stevens. All, 100%. All of that, like, you start to see that stand-up comedy is the same in as, as music. It can all be great. We don't have to pick a genre and be like, this is the only genre. You can like it all. Yeah. But you do start to respect like, oh, we're as comedians, we're all up there playing our own version of music. Like what you do with cars, with stand-ups. I sometimes watch stand-ups and try to figure out what I think might be their favorite type of music or even favorite band based on the rhythm and the style that they like to be oh, when a, they're on stage. That's a great that is a great question. There's something there. So there's wait, a, there's so a similarity to it. Look at me and tell me what music I like. I feel like, but, well, here's the thing. Because I, also I know, was listening to a, I was listening to a song today. On, okay. On uh, I, I, this is so fucking perfect of a transition. I was listening to an artist on Tiny Desk, and the Tiny Desk. Oh yeah. I, yeah, I know yeah. you know what Tiny Desk yeah, yeah. is, but I know that you know what Tiny Desk is because <laughs> yeah, I know that right. you like Tiny Desk, <laughs> right. and I was wondering what your thoughts are of now. Uh, Jeezy's on Tiny Desk. Yeah, Scarface is on Tiny Desk. Yeah, and they're bringing T Pain was on Tiny Desk. Yeah, and it's and it's so awesome to watch. But Tiny Desk was was created in essence for people who love the Pixies. Yes, and just yeah, yeah. want to hear Frank Black, an indie kind of thing. And yeah, in, yeah. it was an indie thing, and now yeah, it's yeah. It, it has crossed over, like, almost like Hot Ones. Yeah, and I was and I was dying because I was listening to Jeezy on Tiny Desk, and I was like, I wonder if Rory appreciates Jeezy the way I do. No. <laughs> Not that I don't appreciate yeah. it, but I bet we probably don't have the same affinity for it. I have such an affinity 
For, look, so go back and tell me what music you think I like. I want to say, and this is what's interesting, is that while I think there's this there's this percentage of it that would be rock and roll. Yes. And I mean like 80s classic rock. But the thing about it is, and this oh, is why oh, you're a curveball, oh, yeah, yeah. is that it also feels like you have this intense 1970s soul music as well. And I don't know what that hybrid is, but both of those things come through for me. Like for me, it's not, when I watch you, it's not metal it's not country music. And I know that you, I think you do like country music. I think I, I, I do not. Okay. Uh, so it's not those things. Yeah. I, those things don't come to me. I, I listen to country music only because the yeah. listens listens to it. And I'm fans of guys like Sturgill Simpson and sure. Yeah. And, yeah, 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 and yeah, like, yeah. and, uh, but I'm not, I'm not like a Luke Bryant fan. Right. Like yeah, I don't yeah. listen. I'm no offense. I'd love to have him on the podcast, but I, I'm, I'm not, but that's, that's not, not my, your go to go to. It's yeah. And it's not even your choice. I'm it's sneaky. already built into your brain and your soul. You can tell, is. you can tell my type of music by what type of comedy I like. Okay. Because I am the guy who loves Wilco. Sure. I love, okay. I love, I heard a song the other day that I've never heard before. Star Spangled Banner. Could you imagine never having heard it? <laughs> <laughs> try, try singing it in El Paso. <laughs> they didn't know God, God, they didn't know. Oh, no, wait, what's the song I sing on stage sometimes? Uh, uh, Fuck! I my I, what if I, you know? No, I'm you know Wendy Williams this. has a uh, this Bruce Willis disease. No, who do you, do you know who Wendy Williams is? Wait, is that true? Yeah, did she, that just come out today? Oh, okay, because I think I saw a picture, but I didn't read a thing. So I did, I go, oh, something's happened, and all I did was double check that it wasn't like a R.I.P. kind of thing. No, um, watch this. I heard this song for the first time. I haven't been drinking a lot. How does that feel? Uh, pretty awesome. Yeah, but, yeah. But I drank yesterday, so it doesn't count. But uh, I heard no, this, it counts to, I heard, I, to cut back massively. Counts. I heard this song for the first time yesterday yeah. ever. Yeah, and I'll let you hear it, and it fucking blew my mind. Yeah. It, it's simultaneously not surprising that you identify with this, and it is simultaneously surprising. Interesting. Both of those, because I don't feel like you necessarily i feel like your image that comes out isn't like hey i'm into in early 2000s <laughs> mid, you know t- late 2010 ish uh indie rock yeah but i love that oh the clap, I, that's such a fun surprise the clap your hands and say oh yes yeah i fucking i love that so that's the interesting thing about me, i mean in me. a broader scope of what music do i relate you to yeah. it's 100 percent feel good music it's feel good i 100 percent roy scoble you're a party yes. i mean that's we Yesterday, know it. We I'm, already know that. I'm on Instagram and I watched a video on their YouTube page, on their Instagram of him playing an acoustic and I've never heard it before. I go then to this video. I lay in my bed. It's 8.30 in the morning. My wife's already up. She's taking Isla to school and I played this song on my chest and I had, I was crying. Yeah, yeah. T- tears coming down my face going, this is just beautiful. This yeah. is how every day should start. Every day should have some, like, uh, fuck alarm clocks. It should be like a fucking... This is how we're getting after today. Crying. And, oh, I was sobbing, crying, going, this is a beautiful fucking song. Well, you song. know, a lot of people do cry when the alarm clock goes off. So <laughs> they are, they're kind of doing both. <laughs> so I love hip hop. I love, I love the dead. I love fish. I love, yeah, I love Bob Seger. I love Creedence Clearwater Revival, in my opinion, is that is my theme music. That is, okay. play, play it at my funeral. For, I come on stage to Fortunate Son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe in that band. I believe they transcend. They're, they are the sunrise for me. Sure, yeah, okay. I love that music, but oh, I also... I like that. I love, well... They are the sunrise for me. That's Secret, secret time? Oh. So... Secret. I mean, I'm going to tell somebody, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> secret time. Uh, 2000... I've said... I've told this story so many fucking times, I'm sure. But so two, not totally a secret. <laughs> to, totally, in a, yeah, not totally. I close with this secret time. I close with this. <laughs> when I was twenty-two, I got involved with the Russian mafia. <laughs> secret time. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> the, I'm putting others in. It. That's that is your <laughs> that's your secret time. The most heard story of all time. <laughs> I was in 2016. I had gotten paid twenty five thousand dollars to to headline New Year's Eve at the Oxnard Levity Live. Okay. I did not sell a ticket. I'd gotten fired from Travel Channel. I had gotten. 
pulled off this tour, a Funny or Die tour I was supposed to do. They just pulled me off for no reason at all. I had no money coming in. Yeah. And Tom and I were fat shaming each other. And we were going into Rogan to weigh in. And I knew I was going to lose a weigh in. And Rogan was going to shave my beard. And I, and I drank that night. And I was driving home for the weigh-ins to Rogan. And the sun wasn't up yet. And I'm driving on the 101. And the sun starts coming up to... Creedence Clearwater Revival. Yeah. And I looked at that sunrise as that can be, this can be my definition of my career. Look at I that. I can have everything that I did in the past, all those failures behind me, and I can drive towards that sunrise. And I listened to Creedence Clearwater Revival. That morning, I got a coffee and I fucking said, I will, I will create my own destiny. I will, n I am not going to be dictated by what has happened to me in the past. I will create my future and my yeah. future is a sunrise. I just have to drive towards it. Yeah. And, and that's why Creedence is so. I hate that it didn't work out for you. I that know. sucks. <laughs> you should have thought of a different thing. <laughs> I mean, anybody watching or listening to this, if that doesn't inspire, we obviously know where you're at, but like that should inspire people. You don't have to look at the the thing that just happened and let it define you. You don't yeah. have to. You, you don't. can you can move forward and I got, and change. If I it, got high with Tommy Chong the other day, and he said something I believe. I in. can't even fathom that. It, I, mean, I can fathom you guys getting high. I can't fathom what would happen to me. <laughs> oh, you smoke weed though, right? I do, but I am, e even after smoking weed for decades, I am still a lightweight. I've not built oh. any sort of like, oh, I can, actually now I need eight bong rips to get there. It never did that for me. The same amount, it's literally like if I've been drinking for decades and I still just need two beers. Yeah. That's what it's like. Two hits and I'm good and I had yeah. nine with him. I cannot, and what even grade... Like, this is military grade. <laughs> this is marijuana that they try to leak into other countries to create some sort of manic, like Batman Begins here, take type. this. That's yours. Okay. That's from Tommy There's Chong. There's no joint in here. This is just a case. The uh, Smell it. It's... Uh, I get high from this. <laughs> Fuck, dude. It's, uh, it's, it's really great weed. And he, uh, he said to me... And I'm paraphrasing, but I believe this. Your reality doesn't need to be your reality. Like you can choose your own reality. And I believe that because like I got into a fight with my wife one morning. And then as I got in the car, I said, I don't have to choose to be mad at her. I'll get a new wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to be married. To her. I have money now. <laughs> I'm doing great. I had the sunrise. I got the band. I weighed in already years ago. <laughs> I'll get a new wife. Fuck this. Fuck this. She doesn't get me a young yeah. one, Will. Solutions can happen faster now. I get, yeah. How but, Do you guys fight pretty often or is it? Yeah, we fought last night. Yeah. <laughs> but isn't it funny how like longer you've been together, the faster you can just reset back to we're best friends again? We have a... Like, fuck you. And then five minutes later, like, what do you want for dinner? Like, what do you wish we'd even... Yeah. And like, it never happened. There is a functional thing of like getting mad with someone on your team like on a, in a football team and yeah. then you go, but we were pl still playing it. It's out on the field. Great tackle. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah, we got into a fight last night and then just, I get through, I, I, you can choose. This is what Tommy said. And I believe this, you can look at this one instant and you can hold on to that. Or you can choose to look at this instant in the scope of your relationship and go, well, this, I mean, think of all the fucking her highlight reel of being awesome is so much better than this one little thing. And then you can actually, choose to ignore that thing and go no 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 i need to look at it from three thousand feet up yeah, yeah yeah and i love this person yeah and, and tommy chong t said that to me and i don't even know if that's what he said that's what i heard well you were high and i was so yeah. fucking high yeah i was so high um <laughs> i'd love it if he was telling a whole other thing what oh i <laughs> he was like giving a whole other point episode, you're like, i guarantee you it's something totally different yeah maybe my marriage is fine he's like what are you what <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me, I want to pull up another video um, of shit I've been, oh, this is, I just hope everyone watches. Well, this history. can't be real. It's animated. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have, they didn't have cameras back then. They didn't have animation back then. So these are all the videos. History. You're going to, you're going to come up in here. This is Frankie. Actually, let's Hollywood. go to the history history. Let's name names. Here we go. Do you know who Ibn Battuta Tuta is? No. He was the first backpacker. Okay. He was a Muslim guy. There's five ten tenements to mus being Muslim. One is you must plan a, tra a trip to Mecca once in your life. Yeah. Another is you have to pray five times, which okay. I kind of think is fucking cool. Throughout the day? Yeah, throughout the day. So That's like, a lot, but go ahead. It does seem like a lot. Yeah. But, but how, wait, how long each time? Oh, like a fucking couple seconds. Oh, I yeah. I think. I don't know. I'm not Muslim, but I'm yeah. sure you just like get on your knees, face to east and go, 
yo, how are we doing today, Allah? And then you're back. And then you're back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Allah. I, got, I wonder I got, how long you do have to, pre- like if there's a time limit. It's a great question. I can Google it. How First long? backpacker. What do you think he went with, Jansport? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's interesting about this guy? He backpacked his entire life. He became friends with sultans. He, he traveled everywhere. And there's a rule in being Muslim that you have to, I'm paraphrasing, and I'm probably a bad religion to paraphrase on, but you have to treat, you have to assume every other Muslim's on their trip to Mecca. So you have to treat them with love and respect and welcome them into your home. Yeah. So this guy got love everywhere he fucking went. Yeah. And he traveled the world. Do you like, imagine if everyone could just adhere to that? Do you imagine? Can you, uh, how great, do you, have you ever traveled much? Eh, no. Really? I mean, through stand up, I've been more but, places than I would have thought, but I don't feel like it's wildly exotic. Where's the most exotic place you've ever been? Uh, maybe Fiji. Oh, Fiji's fucking awesome. Yeah. What did you do in Fiji? Uh, we were shooting, uh, the, I was in the last three episodes of season two of Wrecked. And so I was there for wrecked, about three wrecked. weeks to show. It was wrecked. on TBS. I know Wrecked. Zach Kreger, Brian Saka. You know, can't do that. Okay. Tell me what the thing was about. <laughs> they plane crashes and it's a comedy about them like being on a deserted island yeah. and like kind of figuring it out and putting it together. And they shot that in Fiji? They shot it. The Shipley brothers were the writers, creators of it. They shot it in Fiji. They, that season they shot in Fiji. Well, season one, I think they did in Puerto Rico. So I've been to Puerto Rico for season one and then season two was Puerto Rico is pretty fucking awesome. I loved it. That it's, was great. It's a great town. Yeah, yeah. Did you eat any of the street food in Puerto Rico? I did the mofongo Mofungos. and I am all about it. It was so good. It was fucking awesome. Yeah, loved it. Uh, put, uh, traveling, I think, resets your cultural DNA. Yeah, and it wake, wakes you up to realize how microscopic your thing is to, and, and it, I think it increases your compassion towards other people's situation to realize we aren't. We might all be on the same game board, but a lot of us don't get to start on the same space. You know what I mean? Some of us might be at the beginning of Candyland, but some motherfuckers got to start at ice cream floats. I'm an and ice cream some float people, too. some people, in terms of representation, still have not been allowed to enter the game board yet. <laughs> and when you travel, you start to realize that. So you go, oh yeah, we're not all in a space of going, hey, hustle, make money, do well. You go, yeah. That you start to realize like, oh, that's actually not the, I'm actually heading towards the wrong goal. That's not the thing. And you travel and you see how people live. You go, oh, some people that have way less or live in an entirely different situation. You see their genuine happiness and you start to get back in touch with what the nature of things would be, you know, and you start to remind yourself money is not a natural resource. So then what is, what is, so are you, you don't seem like someone who's chasing the dollar. You don't seem like someone who's chasing fame you seem like an artist who's having a lot of fun and i i want to ask in a second don't let me forget what kind of dad you are because i was like i wonder if you're like a fun playful dad but like because i was a fun playful dad but also i was a broken dude so like my i'm i know my daughter saw some of that yeah and uh and they also saw you know there's a period where i was just after the dollar yeah i needed to i had to but yes and then witnessing that wasn't the best i don't think but um god damn it was my first question but what kind of dad are you? I I think similarly. Um, I I think there are moments where I'm I'm very fun, but I also think that in many ways we reflect the parenting that was done to us. Yeah. And I would say that I'm similar to my dad, which is not something I thought that I would be. I thought I would put down all the things I didn't like, and then I would never be like that towards someone else. And I have to say, the older I get, and the the more that I am a dad the more I realize I do revert to that thing that I didn't like or I communicate that way I didn't like being communicated to. And like I, what? Like what? Just like maybe flying off the handle a little bit too quickly over a thing that doesn't really fucking matter. Pierce? Pierce? That, we were talking about this Pierce the other Morgan? Day. No, uh, Christine Pierce is uh, one of our producers here. <laughs> and she... Pierce Morgan's just sitting Pierce over Morgan. here. Pierce Morgan. Hello. I'm yeah. one of the producers. <laughs> oh, all right. Shut see. up, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. Old. Uh, no, I I had that with my. I had learned. I did learn in therapy that I was doing that too. My dad yeah. would communicate in a certain way that maybe resonated with me, or if I worked for me. Yeah, and yeah. I thought if I raised my voice to my daughter, same. Yeah, yeah. I and can't I'm imagine to learn, you I, ever raising your voice. I do, and I mean, get I get very like wildly like passionate about a thing, and I will sometimes even in the moment, my brain will be like, "This isn't you, and this is not how you want to be," and you know that this is not the right response, and then that sort of egotistical need to be right kind of thing overshadows it, and then you're like, "No, push the gas harder and be 
you know, I'm not like violent. I'm not abusive not violent, in any way. Yeah. But I I don't want my daughter to grow up and think this is how you react to stuff. I'd like her to be more zen. And so my what I'm learning now, my eternal quest, because uh, I don't think I'm going to conquer it, is to try my best to as soon as I'm going to have that reaction, try to go ahead and skip forward to tomorrow and be like, all right, well, tomorrow, let's try to bring that guy here right now yeah, and let that guy be the guy that responds as opposed to the guy right now that's too impulsive about a thing. How, and I, and I will daughter? say it's made me a better person. How old's your daughter? Uh, eight. Eight. There's going to be a time. I, I, I hope you don't have to deal with this, but I'm curious when you do deal with this, if this is if this resonates with you where your daughter will distance herself from you naturally. It's sure. right around when they get their periods. Yeah. They start no longer sitting on your lap, no longer yeah, jumping in your it bed. it changes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it changes, and I turned into, I went to uh, the boyfriend who got broke up with. Yeah. And I turned into that guy yeah. of, like, needy, a needy dude. Yeah. And I didn't know how to, and my, I remember saying to my wife one time, so you're, so you're telling me I just got to be, like, not that into her, huh? And she's like, what? <laughs> and I was like, are you, like, play hard to get? She was like, no, hold on. Yeah. This, no. <laughs> She's like, no, you're the Oedipus complex right now. It's too, <laughs> it's too much right now. Do you, Pull it back. Do you, I would imagine you're a great, like I was good at games. So like my daughters would, I remember the probably the proudest moment I ever had was my daughters ran and we were having a party at our old house and my daughters ran in in their bathing suits and they're like, dad, 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 quick. Can you come out and like, and like create a game? And I was like, what? And they're like, you're so good at this. Can you just make a game where we're not having fun in the pool? Make up a game. And so I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I came out and I was like, hey, let's play a game. And all the kids lit up. And my daughter, Georgia, goes, this is what he's really great at. Yeah. And I went, ooh. And then I you bombed so hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't handle that pressure. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Uh, the first game I ever played with them, we, it was a, it was a sleeping game. Yeah. And, I, and we, when they were younger, like four and six, and like all the kids would be there. I go, all right, let's, they go, dad, let's play the sleeping game. I go, all right, guys, sleeping game. First person that wakes up, and this is when they're all chaos. I go, first yeah. that wake, wakes up loses. Smart. So ready? Count of three. Everyone's got to fall asleep. And then I would move their bodies on top of each other and then put them in couches <laughs> and move them. Yeah. And you and they were laugh hysterically just trying to stay yeah. asleep. Yeah. I would take it so far. God, that's so fun. I would, every Christmas, I would have my Uncle Pete call as Santa on my phone and I have him saved as, as Santa. Santa Santa would come up yeah. and I go and I'd put the phone in the thing do you remember these Pierce and I put my phone <laughs> and they'd be like dad Santa's calling and, I, and all the kids would freak out I go well, just send it to voice I'm like, dad you gotta answer it's Santa <laughs> shrugging off Santa yeah. is great and I go hello my uncle Pete would be half in the bag in Tampa and he'd go yeah. oh 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 <laughs> is Max Fromkin there and he'd be like how does he know I'm here and he's like, Max, I heard you want a bike this Christmas. Max was Jewish. And he took his dad outside and he said, I got to know if this is real. <laughs> he's like, "That Santa just called. And he said, if, if this is real, we got to get rid of our religion. We yeah, need yeah, to start, yeah. We need to be Christian. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good I got. That's yeah. how much I took it too. <laughs> People questioning their faith. What's your, what's, what kind of mom is your wife? She's uh, phenomenal. Yeah. She is great. She is uh, very sympathetic, very supportive, wonderful in terms of managing emotions, willing to do all of the research possible towards what people say communication with children is like now. Um, she She's awesome about it. And I think it's a benefit to our daughter. Uh, and it's a benefit to me to see how she does it because we're very different. And even when I know she's right, I'm like, I don't know. My philosophy is different on how we handle this kind of situation. And I think it's, I think there's a benefit to a little bit of getting both sides. But I would say in terms of uh, the gift that my daughter will one day realize that she has is she has a really great mother. I'm not trying to play myself down. Like I'm not good at the job. But in terms of really building my wife up, there will be a time when my daughter will come to realize like, oh, I got a good one. I really got lucky. I said that to I said that to Leanne last night in our argument. I said, we realize at one point Isla will call you from college and go, Mom, I was wrong. I need you. Yes. Because right now they're butting heads on everything. Of and course, it's yeah. mostly independence. Yes. And Isla doesn't realize that Leanne is usually always right. Yeah. And she pushes back and it's and Isla, I'm I'm Isla's safe place. Georgia, Leanne's is Leanne. Leanne's yeah, yeah. like they're. We both have our safe spots, and and 
it's interesting that you go, I never thought of that when I was just trying to get laid. Like, what kind of chick is this going to be? Like, when we have humans together. You don't. Yeah. I was like, I hope this bitch gives good empathy. Yeah. Like, I... <laughs> Got empathy. Yeah. Like, That's what we call it. Yeah. <laughs> Should we empathize tonight? What are you doing later? Should we empathize tonight or go to bed? <laughs> there should be a way. There should be a dating show where... Uh, it's a stupid bit. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I've been down that road. Yeah. The bail right away. Yeah, nah, it won't work. It won't Isn't going to work. The, uh, but yeah, it's crazy that like when you... Where did you meet your wife? In D.C., we were both doing improv at a theater, really? and she was on a team, and I was on a team, and I really liked uh, her. I went to her team shows, and I liked them. They always hung out after. I grew up playing sports, and I was what like, sports? you know, uh, soccer, basketball, uh, some tennis, not really that far golf? off tennis. Uh, I didn't get into golf really till college, okay. uh, and that was just to get high and drunk with the soccer team. Um, but yeah, mainly soccer and basketball. Do you know who David Chang is? Yeah. Would you like to see his golf swing? Yes. Let's see if he sent it to me. God damn it. <laughs> he didn't send it to me. I'm in, I'm in driving. Are you asking him his golf? I know that you're wanting to show golf. him your golf swing. You're his, great at golf. I'm a, I'm a, uh, no, I'm a. What's your handicap? Uh, mostly drinking. I know. No. I, I was about to do it and I go, there's no, there's no way he's not going to take this. You set someone up like that. You got to do it. <laughs> there's a, uh, there's a great game that uh, Jared Allen, the quarterback for the Bills plays when they play golf. It's called yeah. Buffalo. Have okay. you ever played it? No. If you hold your drink in the right hand and someone calls Buffalo, you got to drink the whole drink. Okay. I want to do that. Okay. It's that. only if it's in your right hand. It's in your right hand. Okay. So they fuck with each other as they play golf. And okay. they're like, uh, "Let me. Uh, how big's your hand? And then uh, one guy holds his hand up and it goes Buffalo. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. he's like, fuck. I, I got to down it. That seems, I'd love to play golf with you. I don't think we've ever played golf together. I don't think we have either. You play with J Larson a lot. I play with him a bunch, yeah. He is a You know, fun. he's shooting a commercial right now with Rory McIlroy in Florida and a friend of mine, Rob Boughton, from, who lives in Charleston. They're in Florida right now shooting it. Really? Yeah. He sent me a picture today of him and Roy McElroy, and it, it just kind of makes you laugh. You're like, so bizarre. Who's, who's <laughs> one of the who, best golfers in the world? You're just like, anyways, we got to sell this product. <laughs> Top five golfers you want to play with? Oh, that's a great question. I think Kevin Kisner would be so fun because I really? think he would be such a smart ass. Yeah. And I don't mind getting roasted when it's like, when it's funny. I mean, you could dig in, you could cut me up, but if it's funny, I like it. <laughs> um, and I think he would be able to do it. I feel like, Tiger's an obvious one, but I would like to I would like to play with Tiger to say that, that I play Tiger. with Tiger. I have played golf with Bill Haas. Uh, that when you play golf with a professional golfer, you realize how garbage you actually are, even if you're very good. <laughs> you're like, yeah. oh, that's another planet of like being able to play the sport. Um, who else do I think would be super fun? I feel like Max Holmes would be very fun because it's another kind of a roasty Max is a really cool kind of guy but also I like watching that dude uh, I like watching that dude play um, I think in terms of going maybe more old school Fred Couples seems like a chill dude yeah I could probably name a ton Fuzzy would be a fun guy I think yeah I think a there's a lot of guys that have Fuzzy and see what some, he says <laughs> see if he <laughs> see what he regrets I think there's I think there's a lot of dudes that would pass on Gary Player. Player I think Gary Player would be exhausting yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that'd be fun. Yeah. Greg Norman. I'm a, uh, Greg Norman's a fucking beast. I met him yeah. at Live. Yeah, yeah. And his... Is he fun or is his vibe fun. not fun? He's fun. He's he fun. Asked, yeah, yeah. asked me if I was going to take my shirt off. Yeah. He's like, you taking your shirt off? And I was like, yeah, if you say I can, yeah. I will. <laughs> do you want me to Greg do that? He's like, can you hit scared a... Of him. You're the you, shark. Can you hit a 7-9? <laughs> I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, good, good do the whole... Oh, I think I saw this footage of you doing this, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was... It was, uh, it was a couple years ago. Yeah. It was, uh, it was last year. Or last year? Yeah. Last year, it was uh, at the in Adelaide. I think I saw this. It yeah, was, yeah. By the way, have you ever heard that story? I, I would play the clip for it. It would take me forever to find it. Yeah. But uh, they had a nine iron. It was a hundred. It was a hundred. No, it was a, nine, it was a seven iron. And it was 150 yards. Okay. And I was like, I was like, I think that's a nine for me. I was about to say, I think yeah. you would, that would sail and, the green. And the lady goes, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's never played golf before. Seven irons of five, uh, 150. And I was like, for you it is. No, it's not. For me. And then she's like, the pros. Hit a nine, 150. He's going to shank it. I need everyone to sign waivers. Yeah. And, and I was like, hold on. And then I started like second guessing myself. I know. Yeah. And Mark Smalls was with me. Great golfer. Yeah. Great golfer. Great coach. You know Mark Smalls? No. Country Club adjacent. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. I yeah, know yeah, Mark. Yeah. 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 And Mark's like, ease up on a seven. Ease up on a seven. Take half a swing. Yeah. You're yeah. fine. So I got, and I fucking striped it yeah. right over the fucking pin and then flew the fucking green. Good. Flew the green. Good. But, uh, 
That's the same as a whole. You just turn around and go, I told you. Yeah. Done. I told you. It, but that nerves. I mean, I take a eight iron like 160, a seven iron 170. Yeah. yeah. 150, I would have gone nine or like a little bit off on an eight. This is when I was 275 pounds. PH. Is it fat gonna, swing? This is my. Yeah, I saw. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you did stripe that. Yeah, I did. There's Mark. Yeah, there's Mark. Yeah. And then this is Chase Kepka's hole in one. Yeah, I predicted I it, and then I ripped my shirt off, killed a beer out of my shoe, got a throat infection. Um. Oh, hang on. No one ever talks about the throat infection possibility. Uh, with this ripping beers out of shoes, uh, searing, no one ever talks about it. Searing throat infection. Yeah, it could, I mean that. I you, that could not be a more uh, logical result. It did, if I, you say I got a stomach virus, I go, yeah, you drink a beer out of a shoe. I couldn't figure <laughs> out. I couldn't. I couldn't figure out what was happening to my throat, dude. I ate a steak out of the toilet and I got so <laughs> sick, and I don't even understand. I can't. I, wh what? What happened? <laughs> All these clips I see of people drinking beer out of shoe. I'm like, I, I understand that it's every, a thing right every now. Every night, every night, I would buy, I was buying new shoes to try to help myself through it. <laughs> every night, I was drinking beers out of my shoes, and towards like on the eighth night, I was like, I, I my, can't. It was yeah. so bad, and I said, I'm something's wrong with my throat. And they're like, You've been drinking beer out of your shoe. Yeah. And I was like, Do you think that's it? And they're like, Are you being serious? Yeah. Like I'm someone who doesn't notice diarrhea. Yeah. Like so, like, I get that. I can get understand like, that. I just go, Yeah, I just took a shit. Yeah. And they're like, it's all over the toilet. And I go, yeah, that's how we shit. Yeah. And they're like, no. Yeah. A lot of people do logs. Yeah. Not me. I'm backsplash. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then I drink a beer with it. <laughs> Tiger would be fun, but I, I'm, I'd imagine he's a lot. I think he's probably a lot, but I bet you, I mean, it, it would be one of those like, I mean, it's literally like the, the, the legend right there. I tell you what, old school, that can't happen. But Arnold Palmer seems to be like, like literally the king, literally the king. But also that would be like, you get to w pick one person dead or alive. I'd be like, I think everything about what I'm told that guy was seems to be like, oh, that's the Jesus of golf. Like he got it. He understood the mission. He, uh, how about I be great? But how about I also be a genuinely awesome person? A too? great ambassador for the sport. Exactly. Exactly. You're a good ambassador for comedy. You think so? Oh, I know you are. I know right. you are, you're not you're not a bad person. You're a good person, which oh, is really important. No, dude, my <laughs> secret time is days long. <laughs> but you're play, but you're funny as fucking shit and original. Um, and that's, I appreciate that. Like if 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 I'm not, I just to clear it up. I'm not like a bad person, but no, I think some people think I'm a good person. It makes me feel like a fraud because I'm like I'm nice to people. I think everyone should be, but Yeesh. I just told you I yell at my kids sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you thinking that's a good thing. The. Uh, no, I Tiger is someone I'd love to play with, but yeah, I think my list. I'd love, I'd love to play golf with Michael Jordan once. That would be very fun. He would yeah. be a badass. I didn't think about that. I didn't think outside of the sport. Isn't it funny that Michael Jordan was so good at basketball? His logo is on the clothes of other sports. You'll never see that in anything else. The fact that you could see like the air jump man on a football uniform. You're like, how good do you have to be to wear someone in another sport like golf? Yeah. I have the new Jordans for golf. That's not even the sport he played. And they're, by the way, they're great. <laughs> and they're great. They're fucking great. Yeah, Jordan's a fucking... That's crazy. Yeah, what are you afraid of? 2024 is here in full swing, and that means it's time for a New Year's resolution check-in with our friends at Manscaped. News flash: it's never too late to level up your grooming game and keep your bush tamed. Manscaped's new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra is every man's cheat code to look good, feel good, and turn the page on confidence this year. And for my men who want the full grooming experience, look no further than the Manscaped Performance Package 5.0 in this grooming kit. You'll get the trusted lawnmower, Manscaped's ear, nose, and hair trimmer, and essential aftercare products with the Crop Soother Ball Aftershave Lotion and the Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant. Let's face it, resolutions might come and go, but a well-groomed you is here to stay thanks to Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BERT at manscaped.com. Embrace a new you and definitely embrace a new trimmer. Courtesy of Manscaped. What are you afraid of? In life? Yeah. I used to be pretty afraid of death. I gotta say- I'm terrified I've, of death. I think I've come, I think I'm in a different place with it now. 
Um, I think the thing I, I fear the most and think about a lot is a, uh, a, a zero future for uh, ourselves and our children based on how we behave, who we are, how we treat each other, environmental stuff, uh, uh, social, economic stuff. I think, I think we're in a strange place where there's a lot of things that need to be fixed and they need to at least be paid some attention to very soon because I feel like whatever road we're going down as people, I don't think it can sustain. Yeah. And I don't think that has to be, be interpreted as a bad apocalyptic thing. I think we as people are incredible, but I do think we have... Like, it, for an example, uh, I think about AI all the time and how fucking cool it really is. But I also think what a detriment it could be to just human beings who are alive and have to be here and have to be able to afford groceries and put fuel in their car and like do need jobs. Yeah. And I think we're letting some people be in charge who just go, hey, I can just do whatever the fuck it wants and everything's great. And you're like, I, but I think before we just decide that, we should maybe make a pros and cons list yeah. and then decide. But it seems like we live in a world of zero regulation and I think we're learning that that maybe isn't a great, great place to be. I'm the person. That's my biggest fear. I'm the person you should be afraid of the most because I don't understand any of it. Yeah. So I'm the person that goes, AI, that sounds badass. Can I get it in my house? <laughs> and, they're like, and they're like, yeah, you can. And then someone said to me the other day, you have it. It's called Alexa. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. wait, I love Alexa. Yeah. I love Alexa. Like, I, I can't imagine. I had Alexa and I got rid of it because I was like, oh, someone's hearing our conversations. Oh, I hope not. They are. They for sure are. Someone's hearing it right now with our phones. These are these things are always happening. That's what I mean in terms of when someone goes, oh man, I was just talking about this thing the other day and then an ad popped up on my phone. That isn't coincidence. There's a setting on your phone where you can say it's not allowed to be, your phone device is not allowed to listen to you yeah. at any point. And they the, have that setting? That's a setting on your phone that you can turn off. But why does a product exist that you can go buy where there isn't some sort of governmental agency that says you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. But we live in a world where a governmental agency is 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 to go to someone like Apple and go, actually, you are allowed to do it. Can we benefit from it as well? We'll give you money for it. And then they do. And then we all, as people who are just normal people trying to live our lives, yeah. have to find out like, oh, well, I'm, I'm not planning some sort of terrorist operation, but I don't think you should be allowed to hear what I say to my family. Yeah, but it is cool when you go... <laughs> just, to, just to hype a product to me later. No, but I love that, though. <laughs> I love that. I love that. When well, I'm then like, you don't want to turn that off. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I, the other day, I, I, there's a pair of But Nike. just so you know, this is going to ruin secret time for you. <laughs> <laughs> if they pulled my Alexa... <laughs> I know. ...conversations. Yeah. I wonder... Because that's the crazy thing is you don't realize what you're saying sometimes and then until someone pulls back a clip and you're like, oh, I said that? I know. And you're like, oh, fuck. Well, the thing I hate about that is that uh, our opinions and our, our who we are as people changes uh, over time anyways. So we now live in a world where someone could pull up a podcast appearance you did when podcast started where you maybe said something that you did think or feel at the time. And like, let's say... Like, ten like Scientology makes sense? Keep going? Sure, yeah. So let's say, <laughs> and then when you get to a point where you go, you don't think that anymore and somebody goes, yeah, but look at this clip and you just want to be like, yeah, but we as every single person cannot, in terms of like, you know, if you were like, ah, there's a clip of me sexually assaulting somebody. Well, now we're talking about something else. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, if you're yeah. like, I gave an opinion about a thing that I actually don't think is my opinion anymore. It's like, at what point do we have grace for people to, to change and grow and learn? Like, I think we have to have that. Anybody or that thinks they're born with the knowledge of everything, like th that person doesn't exist. And yeah. we keep kind of throwing stones at each other. It's like, ah, come on. Like within reason, the judgment has to kind of dissipate. A it's little bit. interesting. All those fears still, I still look at it at death as overwhelms all of them. Cause then I always yeah. say, I said it to myself in bed this morning, one day I will die and life will go on. I kept going 85 million years and yeah. I'm only like 70 of them. Yeah. And I go, and I was thinking... You look amazing for 70. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good. It's testosterone. I feel great. I feel great. I actually think we should all get diarrhea then. Because you're doing it right. I've been having diarrhea my whole adult life. Yeah. But I never... I think it's just anxiety and stomach disorders and like... And I've learned yeah. not to eat spicy food. But I thought... <laughs> I thought Spicy food? No. Beer in a shoe? Got it. <laughs> <laughs> 
I can't say no to spicy food. I get it. It's, you, well, spicy food's great. Well, can I ask you something? Do you please. think something happens uh, when you die? We all Obviously, we all live in a space where we either think something happens or we think nothing happens or obviously that space of, which I consider myself in, where I just, I don't know and I, I don't like bearing the mental power of, 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 of putting any energy towards it, it gives me because a panic there's no attack. way to know. It gives me a panic attack as you say that. Yeah, but what what about it? Maybe I can. What what if I can maybe set you at ease? Like the 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 fact that if nothing happens and you're just gone forever, you're you won't have any awareness of that. Anyways, you only have that anxiety now because you think you're gonna be living in blackness, but aware of it. And like I think it's I'm more a panic attack talking about it. I think it's more claustrophobia. Mm -hmm then it actually is what's going to happen when I die. I think our biggest fear is uh, I hope it's not painful and I hope that doesn't last a long time. Like if someone said you get to pick how you die, okay. I'm probably going to go massive amount of pills or tons of morphine where it's going to feel good and then I'm just gone because my body can't sustain whatever the drug is. But I want it to be like that. Well, my biggest fear is the pain of it. It isn't the result of it because I don't believe in hell or a punishment. Not that I don't believe that something could be heaven, but I think what I don't like about uh, religion or even going to private school like I did that says this is what happens when you die. What I like is the open book of it could be anything. There is a world where unbeknownst to you, is that you have maybe already died a hundred times. I've thought of that. And you're just still here, and there isn't a definition to what here is, so you might as well have fun, and you might as well be respectful, I think. Because what even... I, my daughter asked... I mean, it's in my special, asking about what happens when you die. But I have told her, I go... And I'm not trying to like give her too much at eight, but I <laughs> asked her, do you remember where you were before you got here? And she's like, no. And I go, you might still be there. I go, I can't tell. I don't want to tell you there will be a result or there's something next. I go, all I know is we're here right now. So what if this is fun and we just, we really enjoy this and we don't bog ourselves down with the next thing? What if we really enjoy this thing? And I feel like you're actually very good at it, enjoying this thing right now. I mean, that's the impression I get from seeing, you know, your career and seeing like the the videos and stuff, like it seems like you have an awareness of, I want everyone having fun and we're having fun. And right now is fun. Let's yeah. not worry about the drive home. Let's not worry about how we might feel tomorrow. If we, if we drink tonight, let's just be at this right now and be like, we're all here. They're laughing and we're having fun. We're smiling. Yeah. That seems to be the vibe I get from you. And to me, that should kind of be the vibe of what the whole ride sort of is. I can't avoid the drama. My my big things that were hanging me up, and I solved one of these. Uh, not to go back to these videos, but when I watched, it's just faces of death. The Donner, wow. the Donner party, the Donner party. Oh, no. um, they would. I, I I was worried about being buried in a casket because I'm not comfortable in a casket. You're going to be dead. I know, but I, okay, go ahead. But I know, but if I do have any sort of consciousness, um, a casket's not where. I, like no one knows if there's a consciousness. Yeah, I don't want to be in a casket. And in the Donner Party, what was very common back in the days when they started to like, because they, they fill their wagons up with all their shit, yeah. is, is going to blow your mind. I, I learned this in one of these documentaries I watched on the Donner Party. Okay. They would bury their their entire wagon. Okay. They would be like, listen, we can't, we're, we're about to cross the, the pass. We can't bring the wagon. We'd, our oxen are sick. Let's go over to the riverbed, bury our fucking wagon. They'd bury an entire wagon with all their gold coins and all their jewelry, all their stuff. They'd bury it. And then once they got to L.A., they'd come back, or Sacramento, they'd come back, get their uh, their stuff, and then bring it over. And I thought the other day, I want to be buried in my tour bus. Okay. I'd be comfortable in that. It's yeah. going to be a huge, huge hole. Yeah. But I want to be buried in my tour bus, in my bunk, in my bed, so that, and then I'd load my tour bus with all my favorite things, mm -hmm. almost like like the like the, the the pharaohs. Yeah. Load my tour bus with like tons of porosos, tons of weed, <laughs> lots of pork rinds, yeah. some chili uh, pistachios, yeah. uh, some liquid death, some cold beer, some diet root beers. Hydration. Hydration. I like that. Hydration. <laughs> some liquid death. Liquid death. LDs maybe. Yeah, some yeah, LMNT because yeah. I like to be hydrated. Yeah. And then that way if I do happen to wake <laughs> up, I go, oh, at least I'm in my tour bus. <laughs> yeah. Because you do think you will wake up. I think so. I don't think you will. 
Unless you go out but like plane. I have no idea. Like I don't know. Planes. Like there's a there's a flight I was Googling that was flight four seven four four seven out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. What, what brought you to want to even know what you're about to tell me? Is death. Is that Oh all, death, right. All these people <laughs> all, right, all right, the thing we're talking about. <laughs> all these people got on that plane after a vacation. Yes. And some got first class seats. And yeah. they thought this will be nice. Yeah. And then that plane went down. Due to turbulence. Yeah. Tur- like the thing they say it never does. I mean, there's like so many interesting. First How, of all, wait, when was this? Uh, it's pretty, <laughs> it's like goes question. by like the first plane. No, it's uh, <laughs> I, I got into a deep dive on this. Flying over the equator is over the ocean when they fly from Brazil to France. And they radars don't work really great over the ocean, I think, because there's no land to really tell them what's there. Mm-hmm. And what will happen is because that's where all the crosswinds meet. Yeah. Is crazy wild storms can happen and they can happen up to 60,000 feet. Normally they fly above them, but you can't at a, at a 60,000 at, at a certain level at like 40,000 feet, you can't, there's not enough air to be able to climb. Yeah. And so you start it to thins out, it thins yeah. out. And so they were trying to get up above it and they couldn't. Oh. And, and it just got into a place where the fucking plane crashed. shut, shut down or, but there were, and I, the thing that I get stuck on is there were people who had planned out, the rest of their month, and that didn't happen. They just got and, and their lives and their lives. Yeah, and then and that I was, and then I watched every plane crash I could. Yeah, I was I was on a deep dive. Are you afraid of flying? I used to be. I used to be terrified of it, and then you know, naturally through the nature of this gig, you gotta figure out how to get through it. I used to do Benadryl. I used to get to the airport early and drink. And the sad thing was I would be flying on the, like the Thursday of the one show. And so I would get there and I would be pretty zonked going into like 45 minutes. And I was like, oh, I have to like stop. Dude, I can't live like this. What what was your favorite airport drink? I would, I I mean, (laughs) here's what I didn't know in my youth. And I mean, my youth of 26, 27 years old. Yeah. I was drinking Guinness, which is 4.3%. So I'm drinking Guinness, probably three or four Guinness at the airport and taking uh, Benadryl allergy medicine to put to knock you out to to kind of knock me out but but put me in that kind of hazy I'm not gonna lie and I'm not trying to promote this but it was kind of fun but put me in that space of like like oh I'm out of it but the main thing is I don't give a fuck right now and that's the space I was trying to get to so about three or four Guinness and a Benadryl would do it it's just you can imagine that as soon as you land the only reason I was able to get through a lot of those shows was just the adrenaline of a show. You know, that adrenaline kicks in and then you're kind of sobered up a little bit yeah. to get through the job. But also Thursday would just be one show and then we'd go out and drink Thursday and hang night. out on yeah. a Thursday night where you go a little bit deeper because you're like, I'll sleep all day and then do the show tomorrow. And yeah. like, I, I, no radio? Some, Done. At some, I know. At some point I got to, I, I got into a space of being like, oh, the, I can't sustain this if I don't like, I got to get over this now. My wife was great. Like whenever she would fly with me, she would be like, you know, just breathe through it. The thing about for me with flying was that I had surrendered all control. Uh, There isn't something I can do in the event of a thing. Whereas like on the ground, I feel like I can make a choice. I can move. I can get to another location. Even though those are wildly unrealistic scenarios a lot of times too. But for some reason on a plane, it's like all I have is my chair and I have to hope everybody in charge and this machine is good at its job right now. You would get in the chair the same way Marie Antoinette got into the back of that carriage and they drove her to our execution. Yeah. I that yeah. that I would get I never I, looked at it that way, but I do. Yep. <laughs> I do. When I go, I because they And you're eating cake as soon as you sit down. <laughs> I know I said let them do it, but no why don't I get to have any? <laughs> no one's throwing food at you. You just get on that plane as if you're going to your execution. Yeah. I think of that. I was a I still am, not as much now. But I was a big airport drinker. Okay. Like, like. Because, like, b- because of that. Because of terrified that. Yeah, of flying. Yeah, yeah, terrified yeah. of flying. And I would yeah. get to the airport always Now, two what hours. are you doing? Shots or cocktails? Or what are you doing? There are phases of this. You're like, to- oh, duels. Less than you, Rory. <laughs> oh, duels. And one half Benadryl. I was Xanax <laughs> and uh, Heineken's. Yeah. For a period of time. And then I switched over to vodka soda. Yeah. And it was double Tito's soda, big glass, no lime. And I'd 
I mean, I probably put, put down like four before I got on a plane. Yeah, yeah. And then get a double jack on the rocks, lots of rocks on the plane. How often do you have to piss? Uh, very seldomly. Oh, very that's seldomly. good. Yeah, I'm not a big. I don't. I don't. I. I, but I, I also was very specific. I learned my rhythm. Yeah. So I was like, I have to sit in the aisle because I don't want to have to walk over I know, somebody. Yeah, yeah. I have to sit in the aisle. I have to be in the front row. The first, this is how crazy I was. I had to be in the first row because I wanted to have the first cocktail that they started serving. I would lose my mind if I was in the fifth row. I know. And I watched Waiting. Them, and, and then I was like, did she fucking forget about me? I know. I know. I had yeah, to sit yeah. in the, I still have to sit bulkhead front row, first row, uh, aisle seat on the right side of the plane. I always sit there. Yeah. And, uh, and I, not until very recently, it was when I quit drinking for a long period of time and I quit drinking for myself, not for a bet or like, you yeah. know, a challenge um, that I started not drinking on planes going like, oh, I want to be healthier. Yeah. Like I want to yeah, yeah. feel better. Yeah. I want to, I, one of the fun, I would say as fun as a drink before a flight is a coffee sober after a flight. Yeah. When you get I off, love you're like, that. Oh, it's the Especially best. when you land early, if you're on a very early flight and you're like, oh, it's still not like a weird time to have a coffee. This works. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. I can't do coffee on a plane. Yeah, I don't. I can't do weed They on say a plane. don't do it. They say don't have coffee on a plane. Yeah. They say that's not like quality water that it's mixing with your... <laughs> That coffee. That oh, for real? Drink. Yeah, that's what people say. Oh, I just and that's enough for me to go. All right, I won't do it then. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would never understood people who go. Oh, I'd like a. Can I have a coffee just black? I'd be like, and then they read a paper like they're dead inside. <laughs> it did. You would look at that and be like, I bet this guy's portfolio is phenomenal. <laughs> I sat. I sat next to a guy on a plane. This is my favorite first class story. I sat next to a guy on a plane, and he had his phone like this, no case, and he put it next to me. And I said, uh, we're in first class. And I was young. I was, I got upgraded. And I was like, no case, huh? And he looked at me and he goes, no, I'm a man. <laughs> and I said, what? And he goes, I take care of the things that I buy. And I don't have to worry and cover them in a safety case. I don't throw my phone around. Yeah. And I went, yeah. And he goes, I can't respect a guy who comes in with a big wrapper around his phone. Because I don't, <laughs> that guy doesn't care about his phone, himself, anything. And I don't want him to have my business. I went, fucking gangster took the phone off my case i was like i'm now a no case guy broke it three days later <laughs> yeah yeah not only did i break that one i brought the i broke the new one i bought yeah i brought it i broke it the next day yeah and i was like i'm going back to cases well i gotta say while i hate everything you said about that guy <laughs> i do have to say for a very long time i would have no case on my phone i got it is more fun in your hands without the case it's, it will it's you have to admit it's it. the tool yeah, and I will say that I used to not have a case or like the screen or anything, and people and I and so I heard someone else uh, say this. This isn't me saying it, but the reason I would tell people they would go, "Why do you have all that?" And I go, "Steve Jobs didn't design it for it to be in our hands the way like that. He didn't, he wanted us to touch this screen. He wanted us to feel this product. This is obviously back before he passed away. He wanted to feel this product. And again, I heard someone else say this, and I said that's going to be my response because I think that person's right. Yeah." I would say it and do it that way too. And I mean, literally, I don't even know if this has it, but like, I mean, I've dropped it. <laughs> and ever, then eventually I was like, you know what? Let's let's protect this. Yeah, let's get an four, otter box. Let's protect this four thousand invest dollar investment that we have to buy every year. <laughs> have you ever hacky sacked it as it falls? I'm like, actually I mean I'm very good at soccer. I'm very good at bringing it down, settling it to the ground. Like, like so as I drop it, I can like get my toe under it and like it's fine. I kicked mine. And it hurts my toe a lot. I kicked mine up in the air and made it break way worse one time. <laughs> right into like, the just ceiling. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it shot up like eight <laughs> feet and then just, and I was like, fuck. Like, fuck. It would have just scratched I if I would have let it go. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious. That's a, that's another deep dive. I went to a Larry Cable Guy show one time and I saw how many people had otter boxes on their phone. Yeah. It was right when I was I was rocking mine, no condom, nothing, raw dogging it. And I was like, I was like, yeah, that guy was right. And then immediately broke it. Yeah. But I do hate how that guy talked. I do. I don't I, respect a man who has... <laughs> like, it, fuck you. you I was young dipped. enough. To, I was oh, young yeah? Enough what to, you got? Yeah. You got shoes on? You pussy. <laughs> oh, you wear shoes? Why? Because you don't know how to be the way we used to be? <laughs> Mind you, I'm drunk on a plane with a hoodie and a yeah. vest on. Yeah. <laughs> Hammered at 8 a.m. Yeah. I, I actually don't need a protective case. <laughs> then why the fuck are you in first class, motherfucker? <laughs> Go sit in the back where you can get people around you. You can make some more contact. <laughs> be real. <laughs> be a real person. <laughs> I hope that person listens to this. I hope he does too. That would and be he's great. like, he's talking about me. I, I remember. I was the fucking girlfriend. I was the one guy. who told him. I remember he said, I got upgraded. And I go, I'm not a pussy. 
I'm gonna look at my phone. <laughs> oh, you you are. I wish phone. you would have looked at him and been like, "Oh, you have a phone." <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> I respect my things I buy. I, uh, but do you, do you, like my dad was like that. My dad went into therapy and, and he, it was like a legendary Al Kreischer story. He, he had, they had not, not like corner pointed, but you know, my mom's like, you need to do therapy. And he's like, yeah, fine. I can only picture Mark Hamill, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a far stretch. And, uh, and he, the guy is like, please have a seat. And my dad walked to the window and he opened the blinds. He said, which car is yours? The guy goes, what? And he goes, which car is yours? The guy goes, the uh, maroon Celica. My dad goes, your car's dirty as shit. And the guy goes, I didn't notice. And he goes, well, I'm not trusting you. And the guy was like, what? And he's like, I'm not going to fucking have a therapist who doesn't wash his car every day. And he walked out. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> And you go, I think that's, the therapist would love to talk to you about that. Yeah. <laughs> what a great starting point. <laughs> I don't trust anyone who doesn't wash their car every my, day. My dad washed his car every morning. Can, let me be very clear. People who work at a car wash don't, don't wash their car. car and they probably get discounts. <laughs> my dad would wake up every, it's my, mo, my, mo, my memory of my dad. Every morning he'd be washing his car. That is, what was his car? Please say something so shitty. No, Mercedes. It Mercedes. was the first Camry. No. <laughs> Old school Mercedes and then Lincoln Town Car for a while, Cadillac for a while. I mean, at least they were nice. He, he No, he, I think my dad, I th and sure, it goes back to like being the dad that your dad was. Yeah. I think my dad's dad, my dad, my dad will tell, talk about the two nice cars his dad ever had. Yeah, yeah. And he would, he, oh, buddy, you don't understand. Yeah. And I think my dad grew up on his own, like he's lost his dad at 13 and, and kind of, yeah. and I think the idea that he had a car was a big thing. And so it, and it was like, so he, every morning he'd be out there. It connected him. Whistling and he, <laughs> just washing his car. Yeah. And and every morning he would do the same to my mom as my mom backed out. He'd go, hold on one second. He did it with a hose yeah. and wipe it down. He'd go, all right, you guys ready? And I and it's funny, I, I've, I've maybe washed my car four times in my life. Yeah, I don't do it a lot. I'm a car wash guy. Yeah. I like a car wash. Yeah. I like how, you know what I've learned is not much uh, more expensive. Like if you take it to a car wash and you go, hey, yes. really clean and really do the whole thing, whatever the big package is that you pay for. It's actually not that much money to have someone do the service where they come to your house and they take an hour plus to wash it and detail the fuck out of it. And then you tip them and you go, the, ratio wise, this works out as a way better. I'm not trying to <laughs> ruin the car wash industry, but it, it ends up being a way better deal. Your car is like legit brand new feeling yes. and stays that way longer because the cleaner your car is after the car wash, the more care you apply. Like, if it's really clean, you're like, all right, hey, hey, yeah. I know this is going to be shit in two months for sure. Yeah. But at least for two weeks. I would <laughs> I would add, I would add this, and this is my business model, and I will invest in this business if we can make this happen. I want them to wash my car, and I would like them to fill it up when they're there. How okay. great would they could just top you off? Yeah, yeah. Call it toppers. Toppers. And, and they, they just, they're not allowed to have shirts on. Oh, well, yeah. Well, yeah. I and I mean, men or women. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, look, this is for everybody. Have you ever seen those uh, topless made advertisements? Is it just a fuck? Like, what <laughs> is it? Do you know what I mean? Like, I what know. is going... Like, And also, when they pull up, are they in that van so my neighbors know I hired them? Do you know what I mean? Like, you can't be going around in that. <laughs> oh, oh they, they, I never thought about them pulling up what in that van in front of your house. <laughs> and you're like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Guys, can we... Take those, take those decals off. <laughs> I go back to like Joe DeRosa or Shane Gillis hiring one of them to clean their house, just sitting on the couch going, uh-huh. Yeah, just you just watch. <laughs> nice. Now, this is attractive. It's not looking sexual. It's just being naked, but then, then doing very ordinary chores. <laughs> or just all dudes, and you're like, I thought it would be women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, well, we didn't say that. And that's why we make you prepay. <laughs> yeah, I've wondered that every time. I've always wondered what the deal is. All right, let's see if we got anything else that'll jog anything. If not, and one of these days we should hire them. Um, we uh, do you follow any MMA fighters? 
Mm-mm. No, I am not opposed to it. I just don't. I don't think I do. Uh, I'm, I, I would if you're like recommending some. I would. Oh, well, Nick Diaz, Nate Diaz. They're my like. Yeah. they're the best, and, yeah. and they're really into triathlons. And I had this thing. Anyone who's seen my special, I'll follow them. That, uh, That's my new. <laughs> that would be curious. What in, what MMA fighters follow you? Because like I always go. I, always I actually go, think there is uh, somebody. But I just don't follow MMA. Like. I went to Maynard from Tool. I went to his house. Oh, that's right. You're we a huge Tool down, fan. Huge Tool fan. We I'm went a huge and sat Tool down fan at, too. Oh, great. Yeah. We went and sat down at his house and it was a night that there was like the pay-per-view and he like made some food and like we sat and I loved it because he was walking us through what we were seeing. I mean, I'm sure you've had this experience many times with someone being like, hey, anyway, and you probably could be that guy for me now. No, like, no, explain. no. I'm, I don't know enough. Yeah. Maynard's, Maynard's a, black, a black belt exactly. in jiu -jitsu. So like him explaining it and like, it made me really enjoy it more when someone could translate what exactly it is I'm watching in terms of the the art and the style of combat that I'm looking that I'm looking at. Yeah, you know, I was, I was like, oh, this is great because I now understand what I'm seeing to a degree. Nate Diaz is a big Tool fan. I just hung yeah. out with Nate Diaz in Stockton. You know who the Diaz brothers are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nate Diaz is the younger brother. Okay, I, there's a clip I've watched a million times about some interviewer asking him if he ever got bullied when he was a kid, and he just smiles and he goes. No, I had a big brother, and you, my heart. I like. I go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't have a big brother. I know. And then, yeah, you, and yeah. then you realize his big brother was fucking Nick Diaz. Yeah. No one fucked with that. Of guy. course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But but uh, he <laughs> Nate was telling me a good story about Maynard about he's like really into jujitsu and like yeah, and he's a big Tool fan. And he's like, how fucking great, dude. Tool. Let's take a second and celebrate Tool. Okay. I've been I've been doing it since I was fifteen. <laughs> For real? Yeah. I mean, I've been into it since uh, 95, what, 96. Yeah. What was your first, what was your entry song? Stink Fist. Anima had just come out. Uh, the, 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 the truth is, I, my buddy who is very into music, Christian Kenner, I went to high school with him. He was like the guy who had uh, CDs of bands I'd never heard of. And I mean, the full spectrum of music. It wasn't just one genre. He was just very into music. And I was a guy who only really knew what was mainstream on the radio. I didn't know music i didn't have an opinion of it i didn't have a band that i like was like oh that's what i listened to i just it was just whatever's on the radio yeah. and i didn't like that about myself anymore and so i asked him i go can you just kind of introduce me to fans guide me and he got so excited by this he was like here's what you're gonna do he goes you're gonna go to manifest distant tapes that's where we got our cds and stuff and he goes you're gonna go there you're gonna buy this cannibal corpse album uh and he i can't remember what it was and i was like you got it. i knew it was like death metal i was like okay i'm gonna go on this journey i'm gonna go buy it and I went and I couldn't find it. And it's because I didn't realize there was a heavy metal section. So I'm like looking in rock under C and I'm like, I don't think they have it. <laughs> and I go to walk out and I see this tool display because Anima was out as an album and their new album had come out. And I remember seeing it like either in his car or at his house. And I just went, oh, I'll just get this. And so I buy it and I get in my car and my car was a 1981 like Buick LeSabre so my thing was like a CD player with into the tape deck. Yeah. That's that was my stereo. A CD player. In, okay, you know like the You're portable to, CD. For anyone listening, there was a CD player, and then you had a a, a, wi a, a wire. headphone wire went into that, and, and it on was the other one was a tape a, to a tape. You put the tape in your play. yeah. That's fucking insane that yeah. that happened. That was my tape cassette, and I put that in, and right away it was Stinkfest, and I was just so into it. And what's so funny is I went to school the next day. And he's like, did you buy it? Did you listen to it? And I go, I couldn't find it. So I got this Tool album. And he was like, that was going to be the last. I was going to take you through a whole journey and end on that album. And I was like, I went to the end right away. Yeah. And here's a fun part of that story is that I've now become friends uh, with the band. And recently on their tour in November, uh, that friend, I go, hey, you introduced me to the band. Now I want to introduce you to the band. And he came we went, we stayed on Adam's bus for like one night and he came to two shows, watched sound check, hung out, like saw the whole thing. And it was absolutely insane. It was so cool. What a cool, like sort of closure to this, like That's, story of you, that. But you did a tour just following tool. Yeah. 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 Following around. With? It was Nick Youssef, uh, the second time, uh, Freddie Scott, Nick Youssef and myself for like the first leg of it. And then it was just Nick and I, uh, for the second. And it was surreal. Like right away, Adam found out we were doing it offered us backstage passes and tickets. So right away, before we even knew him, we're 10th row, dead center, going to go backstage and hang out after, which we did. He saw that we weren't psychopath stalkers, yeah. gave us the tour pass, and he was like, 
that'll be good for the rest of the tour. He goes, if you want to throw your jacket in here before the show, like we're all just like, like what? I can't imagine <laughs> dropping my jacket off. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, here, watch this. Fuck. Good luck tonight. And then go on, go out and watch the show. But uh, then COVID happened. He and I became really good friends. I've since gotten to know uh, Maynard, Danny, and Justin a little bit more. And it's kind of crazy. I mean, I feel like you probably have that when you're like, oh, this is a musician I love. And now you're like, and now we're buddies. Like, oh, it's it's I'm very gonna, cool. There is have you had a, him on? No, I love, I would love to. I, would I think Maynard would wine. come on. I would love to drink his wine. I would love to figure his out wine is wonderful. the way his, his, uh, there's a lyric, his lyrics have always spoken to me in such a deep way. Yeah. And something about, I, I, I'm going to say pentameter. I'm sure that's the wrong word, but something about the way he, if, if you listen to that, it's the big drums, big bass with the guitar whining behind it where he'll take a pause and you hear, I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. keep digging. Don't, 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 don't. Yeah, 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 where, yeah. Like there's a song I want only, this is like my favorite. This is my, it's, it's a perfect circle. This, I heard this song, this line in a, in a bad relationship with a friend who was like, I was, I was, he was like a mentor and it wasn't going right. Yeah. yeah and I yeah. couldn't figure out, I was lost in myself. And I, heard this line and it defined the way I was going to look at idolizing people. Such an inspiration for the said I will never ever choose to be. That's the fucking line. You're <laughs> such an inspiration for the ways that I will never ever choose to be. And right now I'm picturing that he is a guest and you're singing about Oh, to I would him. sing. I would love I did it to, I I did it to Snoop that. high in his trailer. I sang his songs to him. I was like, no, we're listening to How did song. he respond to that? He's did like, he that's love not it? what I said. <laughs> I dropped potatoes. I dropped potatoes. I never. Why would I say I dropped bombs like potatoes? And I was like, that's not what you're saying that? And he was like, no, absolutely you're not. You're like, I've built a lifetime of thinking that you love potatoes. Dude, I fucking love Tool. And <laughs> and but my entry song was Prison Sex. Yeah, great. Prison one. Sex was a right. was I wrote a a, a a paper on it because it was such a cyclical song in and it was such a story and it's such a great that whole fucking album yeah, yeah, is yeah. so fucking brilliant, top to bottom. It's beautiful. And yeah. there's, I'd, I'd ask him, there's choices. Cause I, he, it, it's, we want to know a cool sidebar story, tool story. So I'm yes. obsessed with tool. Yes. I was obsessed with tool in college. I went through a period where it really went like, I just fucking, it's all I listened to. All I listened to. I'm doing a show in Vegas, uh, young, probably I'm, I might, I might be headlining, but I was like young. So yeah, it was yeah. like, and the promoter, it's just guy who ran the comedy club was like, "Hey, there's a uh, another show in the big in the in the arena. We want to go see it." I said, "Who is it?" And he's like, uh, "I don't really know." And I walked in, and the oh, guy shit. goes, "Oh, it's a fucking country song." The guy's wearing cowboy boots, and I went, "That guy's not. It's not country. Yeah, that's Maynard. Yeah, yeah, holy fuck." And I said, "Are we about to see Tool?" And he was like, "No, I think it's Perfect Circle." And I went, "I don't give a fuck." <laughs> I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" <laughs> and he fucking. And I, yeah. I, I, everyone didn't care because they didn't really know. And I was lost. Yeah. And I disappeared, went up to the front and was losing my fucking mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Singing along and just, and I remember the first time I heard him on Joe's podcast and I was like, oh, he's a cool dude also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He makes wine. <laughs> no, How yeah, fucking yeah. great <laughs> is this fucking guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 he is a black belt in jujitsu. He's really like he just seems like he's got it. Like and and but his his poet the his lyrics are it's just, incredible. It's really great. I think there's a lot of people that pass it off as hearing something heavy and they think oh it's heavy, so it's about you know anger or violence or whatever. And it's like actually, I mean, they have whole albums that are about like making peace with things and being like <laughs> calmer about it. Just they just happen to sound this way, and so people instead of looking past that and really hearing the music and hearing the lyrics, I think they kind of brush it off. Not everyone's like that. Obviously, they're world famous. Yeah. But I mean, when I hear people in terms of being like critical of it, uh, I'm always like, oh, I don't know. They've really given it the full. Listen, because the song, the musicianship alone, let's say, let's forget the lyrics. Yeah. Like the actual instrumentation. I mean, Danny Carey, I, I to my, in my opinion, is the current best living drummer. I mean, what he can do is absolutely insane. I wish Adam I could, is I one of I my could, favorite guitarists. Just to pull up on bass, does things that no one else does on, on bass. And then on top of it, someone as wildly interesting as Maynard, who writes those kind of lyrics and has that kind of voice, like to be playing music that is like this. And to have a voice 
where in the singing really does match even though, you know, but so many people are yelling and I'm fine with that. I like those bands too, but yelling or screaming or growling even, they're not, he's not doing that. Yeah. He's like really singing it in a melodic, rhythmic, beautiful way and it works. And I think that's what makes them interesting to to me. But I, I agree with you. The lyrics are, I think it's phenomenal. It's fun to find out who likes what music. When I was with Nate Diaz, I remember going like, I wonder what music he's into. Yeah, like, I, was, I was like, it's got to be hip hop. It's got to be because it's Stockton. And I, I said two things. I my two questions. I was like, we're not. I'm just we're hanging out back here, smoking weed. I just have two questions. Where did you learn how to swim? Um, because he's a legit swimmer. Okay, like, he yeah, swims yeah. triathlons. Oh, okay. And and then and there's people. There's people. There's two types of people. And I said this to him, and I didn't think he'd understand. I I didn't know if he'd get what I was trying to say. But there's two types of people. There's people who know how to swim, and then there's people who know how to swim. Yeah, like people who can can swim. They can survive. Yeah, they can get in the water and they can not drown. <laughs> right. And then there's people who know how to swim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I watched him and his brother swim, they know butterfly. They know breaststroke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They know they have their proper hand placement into the water. And I was like, Olympic wow. level. Type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and then the other thing, I go, what music are you into? And he was like, Tool. And yeah. I went, Boom, we're in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, let's get, let's just smoke weed. <laughs> and then he started telling me Mater stories because he knows him. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, look, jujitsu guys know jujitsu guys, and that's yeah, yeah. that's where they connected. Yeah. And I was like, you like fucking Tool? It's like such a. It's a. I can't wait for you to introduce your music to your daughter. Well, you, she came to that concert. What? Uh, we they were in L.A. last week, and I brought her to the crypto crypto dot com arena. I think we can all agree, great name for an arena. <laughs> um, <laughs> Staples Center. Ah, get out of here, crypto dot com. Uh, I brought her to it and uh, she was like, I'm kind of scared. And I go, I go, look, here's the deal. Like we have backstage passes. We have access to all these spaces. Our friend Adam, who you know, and she's hung out with his kids. Like, like he's going to be up there. I go, and at any point, if you want to leave, we can just leave. We haven't invested any kind of like money into the ticket. Like we're here to yeah. enjoy this and celebrate our, our friends up there. And uh, they had a back riser kind of behind front of house. And uh, we went and stood back there and I go, at any point you want to go, we're out. We'll go get in the car. We're gone. So you just decide. And so I go, but when these lights drop, everyone's going to go crazy. I go, and it feels so good. I go, it's actually better than the show itself is the lights going out and everyone screaming is the greatest moment. <laughs> it's yeah. the best. And so that happens. And like, she was into that. And then they start and she actually gets to see now there, there's a projection on that video screen. She gets to see how big that actually is, which is always like, beautiful and it's very artistic. Yeah. And then them come out and everyone going crazy and feeling the energy. They did a whole song. She thought that was the whole concert. She goes, kind of a short show. I was like, that's just one, <laughs> just one song. But you know, as each song goes, they apply like a different element of like more lights, different video. Now there's like smoke. Now there's like actually like laser beams kind of shooting out. It becomes more theatrical as they go. And she was into it the whole time. She loved it. And I go, I understand why you might've been scared. I've played it before and it's heavy. I get that. Yeah. But I was like, it's not that. And I think you'll see that. And she experienced it. And she was like, yeah, this was really fun. So it was cool. It was a very cool experience. I took my daughter to see Metallica. And she was, yeah. like, she was like... Recently? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, and she, she, I bought tickets for both nights. Yeah. And she, the first night I was like, yeah, we'll go to both shows. And then the, on the second night, she was like, can I just, just go with my friends? And oh, I interesting. Like, <laughs> I was like, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And her big thing was Five Finger Death Punch. Yeah. She was, and she's like... She's really into like uh, her t taste in music. I did not see it coming. Is like Minor Threat, uh, uh, Five Finger Death Punch. She the song that switched her is it interesting. What what song introduces you to where you want to go? Yeah, is I'll see if I can type it in. This song. Oh yeah, me. yeah. When I think of System of a Down, yeah, I think of Brody for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah. I was around him when I first heard this. When he first got into it, I think it. we hiked. There's a nostalgic too. Yeah, we hiked Runyon Canyon. Yeah, yeah, together, and I think he had introduced me to System of a Down. Yeah, yeah, and I and it's so funny, but like it's the entry level song that turns you on to the thing that then becomes your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like I, I told someone I was trying to introduce fish to someone. Yeah, and I yeah, played yeah. the song Fee. Yeah, and they were like, "What's that?" And I was like, "Oh, it's, it's about a boy, and it's oh, it's a beautiful song." Played it for him, and they're like. Who the fuck is this? And I was like, oh, <laughs> nice. That's cool. and once you get into fish, then all of a sudden there's a but those a world. Those entry level songs are like the the weed that open it up. Yeah. And uh yeah. It's, are you going to the sphere when fish does their four nights? Uh I don't I don't think I think I'm working. I'm supposed to do that and going the with Bart Coleman the first night. You that are? dude is a massive fish head. He's there. Yes. He, he whenever there any if he, if it's attainable a ticket, he goes. It's cool when you see comics that are into like uh like uh 
Um, I'm going to fuck up everyone's name, but Mike Fanoa is, is really into the dead. I ran yeah. into him down at Dead Ahead. Um, uh, uh, I'm forgetting all the names right now, but when like people are really into a band, yeah, 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 it's almost like it's almost like as cool as like when people are into watches or cars, yeah. But it's like a different, and then when you're into that band, you can connect on like so many fucking levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Music is such a great way to sharing music, with, like in, like your buddy did. And yeah, going, yeah. Let me share this with you. Yeah, yeah. It's such a vulnerable place, and I I got to be it honest is. with you, I, I it's I, and I know we do this for a living, but it is just as fun with comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when you go, have you seen? I know. Have when someone really crushes it, there's someone new that you haven't heard of, or you just hear of them and you finally get to see them. Like when someone really, when someone really does it, you're like, oh fuck, like shit, and it feels good. Oh, because we we get worn down. You know I've what I mean? It's harder and harder to like make us go, oh fuck, that felt incredible. I introduced. Yeah. I do fully loaded every year, and I and I, I bring a bunch of comics, and every year I always offer David Tell whatever he wants. Yeah, yeah. And uh, please come out to it. Every, and my daughter for the first year hadn't got a chance to see him. Yeah. And it was Father's Day. And I said, let's sit for my Father's Day present and we'll watch it tell. I yeah. get emotional because for, especially in the thing you do, like, you know, comedy is your love and your passion and your favorite comic to share it with your daughter and then watch her laugh and like a yeah. gut laugh. like Connection. Yeah. And then you're just like, yeah, that's what. And then she was like, why aren't you that good? <laughs> I was like, oh, and then man. all the tears go right she, back in your eyes. She was like, she was like anger. <laughs> she was like, go wash my car. <laughs> She's like, why don't you do it that way? That's so funny the way he does it. And I went, yeah, I know. He's not telling like a twelve minute story. Why don't you just do his jokes? <laughs> well, there's rules, but I mean, I'll ask him if he cares. But there's rules. <laughs> and Isla's favorite comic is Big J Okerson. Yeah, <laughs> you ever eat spaghetti out of a pussy? And I was like, this guy's got it. <laughs> This guy's a guy. Why can't you do that? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I can't wait to watch my spe- watch your special with my girls. Uh, they're coming down for spring break. I want to oh, nice. watch it with them. You are so fucking talented. Congratulations on the new special. Thanks, man. Congratulations Thank you. on everything. You are one of the guys I think collectively all of us just love to watch and want to watch succeed and blow up. And, Thank you, man. Thank and you. And it's you. I'm just so so fucking happy that I know you from the dude that I listened to on the train going into Amsterdam <laughs> to yeah. know that I know you is like just fucking so badass. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thanks yeah. for letting me come and do this. This is fun. Anytime. 